ELT, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. OTC, PLT in work. Hand off. Hand off to Atlantis has occurred from the ground launch sequencer. Twenty. Nozzle check of the SRBs. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system armed. T minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Four. Three. Two. One. Liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis, the final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. Bypass across the board, scooter, no action. Houston now controlling Atlantis on its way. on its way, all three engines now throttling down as the area begins, as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Atlantis, Houston, no action on the MPS H2 out, P. Houston, we copy, no action. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Houston, Atlantis copies, go at throttle up. Seven miles in altitude. Altitude 49,000 feet. Flight control team discussing the minor transients that were seen at liftoff. All three engines are in good shape. The vehicle is uh, headed downrange. Three hydraulic systems in good shape, as are the fuel cells. Atlantis is 18 miles uh, and altitude downrange 23 miles. Already traveling 2,500 miles per hour, approaching staging the burnout of the twin solid rocket boosters, which have been burning fuel at a rate of about 11,000 pounds per second. Solid rocket boosters have done their job. Atlantis is uh, continuing in its due easterly course to catch up with the Hubble Space Telescope one last time. Altitude 35 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 51 miles. Altitude uh, 195,000 feet. Atlantis is traveling 3,300 miles per hour. Again, all three main engines are in good shape as are the uh, hydraulic systems, the auxiliary power units, and the fuel cells. No issues uh, heading to orbit. Atlantis, two engine Maroon. Houston, Atlantis copies, two engine Maroon. Three minutes into the flight, Atlantis. Two out P is a deucer only, and the ASA one is a power only. Copy, ASA-1 power only, and the H-2 is deucer. Atlantis, single-engine Banjul 104. Copy, single-engine Banjul 104. And that call indicating that uh, Atlantis could reach Banjul in the Gambia, although that is not a transoceanic abort landing site. Atlantis, negative Maroon, select Banjul. Vehicle rolling to uh, heads up now to get good communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system. Six minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. Downrange from the launch site, 4,030 miles. Altitude, 353,000 feet, or about 67 miles. Press 109. Houston, we copy. Single engine press 109. Your shutdown plan is nominal. You are go for the plus X and go for the pitch. 
Houston, we copy nominal shutdown, go plus X, go pitch. That call indicates that Atlantis can reach orbit on one engine. Should two fail, again, all three are in good shape. Approaching seven minutes into the flight, the plus X is a maneuver that's conducted after the vehicle uh, separates from the external fuel tank. These views uh, from the camera on the uh, feed line on the external fuel tank looking up at Atlantis. We'll lose that view uh, here in about uh, a minute or so. And this is a replay of a video shot on board Atlantis earlier this afternoon of the external tank uh, after separation. This video uh, shot through the uh, flight deck windows, the aft flight deck. The first uh, views of Atlantis's uh, payload bay, the uh, airlock in the uh, foreground uh, from which the uh, five back-to-back -back spacewalks will be conducted. Uh, just behind that, uh, looking aft, uh, you see the super lightweight interchangeable carrier that uh, houses the new wide field camera uh, that will be installed uh, on the telescope. Uh, out of view behind that is the orbital replacement unit carrier, and then uh, all the way at the back end of the payload bay is the flight support system. Uh, another rack of uh, change-out hardware for the telescope uh, housed on the multi-use logistics equipment carrier in the very back of the payload bay along the... Uh, Left side on the right in this view as the left-hand door comes open is the shuttle's robotic arm. The uh, remote manipulator system will uh, be used extensively throughout the flight. Uh, its first opportunity uh, will be uh, during a checkout a little bit later uh, on the first day of the flight. And then throughout the second day of the flight, it will, uh, you, it will grapple the... Um, the extension boom, the orbiter boom sensor system you see on the uh, along the right side of the payload bay and in the, on the left in this view that will be used to do an extensive survey of all of the uh, uh, thermal protection system, the tiles and the uh, reinforced carbon carbon wing leading edge panels and nose cap as well as some uh, additional views uh, back near the tail of the orbiter on either side the orbital maneuvering system pods the robotic arm uh, throughout uh, the mission will be uh, operated uh, most extensively by Megan MacArthur as she's serving as the uh, flight engineer and the lead robotics officer for the mission. This is from a camera at the uh, forward port side of the payload bay right behind the crew cabin looking aft along the uh, length of the uh, space shuttle's robotic arm. We're seeing the uh, the middle joint and then off to the end and the uh, cameras located uh, at that elbow as well as uh, out at the hand. And there uh, see the view at the uh, far end of the robotic arm released from uh, from its from being uh, restrained at the end. Soon uh, there, the same happening with the uh, elbow of the robotic arm and uh, it's being raised from the shoulder by Mission Specialist Megan MacArthur. <laughs> 